By now, you'd probably be thinking that SpaceX is racing to get its giant Starship rocket to orbit for the first time. The biggest landmark orbital test flight for SpaceX will likely involve B-7 and Ship-24 prototype vehicles that were stacked together last week atop the orbital launch pad at Starbase, SpaceX's South Texas facility. SpaceX has already performed a number of tests on B-7 and Ship-24, but more await the Starship duo before they can take flight, and the company plans to check the remaining boxes in a decidedly measured fashion. Unfortunately, the duo is struggling with new troubles ahead of its massive tests this week. In a process that this particular Super Heavy prototype is thoroughly familiar with, SpaceX very carefully lowered B-7 down into the center of the donut-shaped orbital launch mount, where 20 separate clamps, each capable of deploying and retracting, form a support ring and giant hold-down clamp. However, B-7 somehow is tilted toward the orbital launch integration tower. It may be an alignment problem with the booster clamps. By all appearances, Super Heavy Hold Down Clamps, which are mechanical devices designed to hold the booster to its work stand or keep it immobile on the launch mount during a variety of tests, work by reaching inside the lip of the booster's aft skirt, which sports a very sturdy ring of steel that 20 Raptor Boost engines mount to and push against. The 20 clamps fit precisely between each of those 20 outer Raptors, and grab onto Super Heavy from the inside. Just before liftoff, all 20 hold down clamps will rapidly retract back into the orbital launch mount. So will another 20 small quick disconnect umbilical panels designed to supply every single Raptor Boost engine with the gases that they need to ignite. The primary booster quick disconnect, which connects Super Heavy to power, communications, and propellant supplies, will also retract into a hooded enclosure at some point during this process. Finally, a giant swinging arm located about halfway up Starbase's launch tower will retract a similar quick disconnect panel for Starship fueling, retract two claw-like support arms, and swing back for liftoff. Altogether, while there are likely even more than just those described before, a single Starship launch will require at least 44 separate devices to successfully actuate in rapid and precise succession. 41 for Super Heavy and at least 3 for Starship. This incredible complexity, probably making Starships the most mechanically complex launch mount in the history of rocketry, may partially explain why Super Heavy Booster 7 has yet to even attempt a 33-engine static fire in more than 6 months after it first left the high bay it was built in. SpaceX has been working on a solution to fix that. The company conducted some tests on the orbital launch mount's hold down clamps last week before B-7 was lifted. And with this enhanced audio, you can hear the sound of them violently slamming shut. Some of these clamps were removed, fixed, or replaced before B-7's return. Besides the problems related to Super Heavy, it seems like SpaceX is also having some trouble with its Starship prototype. According to Zach Golden, S24 full stack looks a lot different at 2000% speed. There could have been an issue, the stage separation clamps not engaging being one of them, but there is no proof of this. So, it's an inclination to believe that the D-stack wasn't the culprit, but either way, they're being cautious, very cautious in fact, right now. The coming weeks are likely to see a variety of tests that feature the full Starship stack. Fueling trials will pave the way for increasingly ambitious static fires, which will likely culminate in a full 33 engine firing of Booster 7. So don't forget to follow up on our next video to keep up to date with the latest information related to SpaceX as well as Starship. To help you out, ring that bell so you'll never forget. <laughs> Moving on to our next bit of news, a procurement document sheds new light on the formation of a joint venture to which NASA plans to award a long-term contract for producing the SLS rocket. NASA published on October 12th a document formerly known as the Justification for Other Than Full and Open Competition for its Planned Exploration Production and Operations Contract, or EPOC, for as many as 20 SLS launches. 
The document explains NASA's rationale, announced on July 26th in a pre-solicitation statement to sole source the EPOC contract rather than hold a competition. That contract would be sole sourced to Deep Space Transport, or DST, a joint venture of Boeing and Northrop Grumman, whose existence had not been publicized by the companies or NASA prior to the release of the pre-solicitation statement. Boeing is currently the prime contractor for the SLS core stage and the exploration upper stage that will be used on the Block 1B version of SLS, while Northrop Grumman is the prime contractor for the SLS's five-segment solid rocket boosters. Much of the document explained NASA's rationale for working with Boeing, Northrop, and Aerojet on EPOC, citing their extensive work on the SLS and access to infrastructure that could, the agency argued, take up to a decade to replicate by another company. Because of that, NASA concluded, DST is the only responsible source to provide launch services under EPOC using the SLS vehicle and no other services will satisfy NASA's requirements. NASA added in the justification statement that it will look for alternative solutions or new sources before exercising any options on the EPOC contract, which as currently proposed would cover the Artemis 5 through 9 missions with options for Artemis 10 through 14 and as many as 10 non-Artemis launches. And in another amazing piece of news, China is preparing to launch the final missions to complete its three-module Tiangong space station which it plans to keep constantly occupied for at least a decade. A Long March 5B is being assembled and tested at Wenchang Satellite Launch Center on the southern island of Hainan. The 849 metric ton rocket is expected to launch Mengtian, the third and final module for the Tiangong Space Station at the end of October. The module was fueled for launch on October 9th, according to China's Human Spaceflight Agency, CMSA. After insertion into orbit by the Long March 5B first stage, Meng Tian will rendezvous and dock with Tiangong, joining two earlier modules, the Tianhe Core Module and the Wentian Experiment Module, in orbit to complete the Tiangong space station. The space station itself could also be expanded from three to six modules, according to Chinese space officials. Such an expansion may depend upon other countries joining the project. That's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and please, remember, if you enjoy what we're doing, become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.